Afternoon, Dean. How are Afternoon. you? Afternoon. I'm really good, thank you. Yourself? Good, not bad, thank you. First off, uh, with victory over Bristol City, you matched a 44-year milestone of successive victories. How proud are you of that? Um, yeah, very proud that we've been winning football games, but also aware that we've not cemented ourselves in, in the playoffs yet, so uh, we need to keep doing it. Um, you know, another game against Bolton that we're looking forward to, so we've not looked back at any of the games. Obviously, we do our analysis and debrief of the game, but you know, we're moving forward and looking to the next game as soon as possible. In that season, 74-75, I think we achieved promotion. I presume that's, that's the kind of main stat that you're interested in. This year's stat is the main stat. Um, you know, uh, you know, it was great back then uh, under Ron Saunders, I believe it was. Um, you know, when they got promoted, um, but times have changed. We're in the championship ourselves now, and we've won eight games on the spin, which is, as I said, after the game, is no mean feat in this in this league at this level. And uh, we've got to continue it because, you know, um, there's teams breathing over our shoulders. We're still looking up, um, looking to catch West Bromwich Albion where we can. Um, you know, and that's got to be our mindset. In these past three wins, we've had setbacks, we've had a sending off, uh, going behind, key players out. How important is it, that trait of finding a way to win in, in any circumstance? I think it's very, very important. And again, I'll go to that word mindset. Uh, you know, the, the mentality of the players at the moment is, is to go all out to win. Um, you know, uh, early, early in the season, we were drawing too many games and, you know, it was costing us places in the league and the players know that we have to go out and win football games and, you know, their mentality is that, um, you know, whether we go a goal down or a goal, goal up, our job is to try and score the next one and uh, we keep, we'll keep trying to do that. You've beaten promotion rivals in this eight-game um, winning run. Some on the outside would worry about complacency with Bolton coming up, but it's fair to say, I presume, with you that they'll get every ounce of respect and focus. Certainly will. Um, you know, as have Rotherham um, and other teams that we've played in this run, um, they'll all get the the same respect as they deserve. Um, you know, we don't fear anyone. I've always said that, but we've got full respect for for every team in this league and. Uh, I've, it, it's been so tight all season with anybody being able to beat anybody else. So uh, we've maintained our consistency over the last you know, six weeks and we have to maintain that to the end of the season. What are you expecting from Bolton? A hard-working team, organised team. Um, you know, uh, I think when they went 3-0 down at Derby, it's probably the first time I've seen them drop their heads a little bit, but there's an awful lot going on at the football club. Um, I think you know Phil Parkinson and, the, and his staff and players can hold their heads up in terms of the the uh, dignity that they've 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 held themselves in. Um, you know, being competitive this season with all the off-field stuff that's been going on. Uh, and while El Ghazi won man of the match against Bristol City, how impressed have you been with with his improvements over the last few months? Yeah, no, he's been good. Um, you know, we keep talking to him about consistency. And, um, you know, uh, that was one of his better performances this season uh, last week against Bristol City. Um, you know, it's it's tough when somebody comes in from another league. Uh, you know, usually you get a little bit of time for adaptation. He hasn't had that. He's been thrown straight in amongst it. Um, and he's kind of learnt on his feet a little bit. Um, but he's shown what a really good player he is. You know, um, got the assist for Connor's goal. Put some great balls in. Probably could have had another three or four assists in the game against Bristol City, uh, and it was a really good performance from him. And we want more of the same, and we want that to be, you know, more of a, a standard rather than, you know, up and down. And he knows that. He's aware of that, and he's working at that. Henry Lansbury is someone we've not really spoken <coughs> a great deal about due to his injury. Um, what are your views on him going forward? A uh, talented footballer. Um, it will suit our system very well. You know, he's been tainted by injuries, unfortunately. But he's worked very hard to to get his fitness back, and it was great to be able to put him on on the pitch um, against Bristol. And you know we've now got uh, strength in depth within the squad at the moment, and uh, you know it's a great place for me to be, and especially having the likes of you know Henry coming back from injury. Um, you know he can see a pass, he can score goals, and he's proven he's been he's been very proven at this level as well. John McGinn, I think, is on 13 bookings. If he was to reach 15 before the end of the season, that would be difficult for him for in the playoff campaign. How, how concerned are you about, about that? 
Well, I'll be concerned if he gets to 14. At the moment, he's on 13. So, um, you know, I'm not too concerned at that, about that at the moment. You know, uh, he was on nine, I think, 26th of December, and he went five or six games then without getting a, a, a caution. Um, the kid knows. I mean, some of them have been have been soft. Some have been, you know, harsh, and some of them have been, you know, good professional fouls for us. So, you know, he's got a mixture of all of them. If we can talk about injuries very quickly, um, Elphick, Chester and Hauser at the back, is there an update on, on those three? Elphick's training with us now, um, you know, he's uh, getting his fitness work back, you know, he got injured against Derby, which is about six weeks ago, so he's working his way back to full fitness along with Alan Hutton, who was on the bench on, on Saturday. Um, uh, Chesley's done some, some grass work now, so he's, he's getting out there and hopefully we'll be back before the end of the season. Um, Courtney's not got out on the grass yet, but the hip flexor seems to be responding well to treatment, and I'm expecting him out probably uh, Tuesday after the Millwall game. Um, can we have an update on Grealish and Codger, who both missed the last game as well? Yeah, no, um, Jimmy's not as sore as he was. Um, you know, he had a rib, rib injury. Um, probably Friday's game comes too soon, but he should be in contention for Monday against Millwall. Uh, and Jack's fine. Jack's been training with us. Um, you know, uh, came back in on Tuesday, and he's good. Any concerns on Tammy, who came off as well? No, Tammy's fine. No, as I said after the game, it was more of a, a fatigue injury than anything else. You know, um, three-game week is, is very difficult, especially for you know a lone centre forward, and um, you know the work rate that. We, he put in certainly against Rotherham with 10 men for an hour and the work rate he put in against Bristol City and it was nice to see him you know, get back on the score sheet against his old team at Villa Park. Very finally, I know you're a keen golfer away from football. Can we just get your take on Tiger Woods winning his uh, major championship at the US Masters after 11 years? Yeah, unfortunately I didn't back him. <laughs> but no, it's a great comeback. Uh, you know... Uh, Probably one of the world's best that we'll ever see in my lifetime, um, you know, and to, to go through what he went through, uh, to come back winning the players as he did last year and now the, the Masters, um, you know, just shows that, you know, the, the cream always rises. Cheers, Dean. Cheers. Hi, Dean. Um, you spoke about mentality of your players there. Obviously, as a coach, when you come into a club, you want to improve them in terms of their performances. But have you sensed that that has considerably improved as well since you've been here? And if it has, why has it? Um, yet it has improved, but it's improved because they're a good group. Um, they push each other in every day in training. They want to get better. Um, their mindset is to come into the training ground every day and improve as, as, a, as a footballer. Um, and they're doing that individually and they're taking that into the matches at the moment. And, uh, you know, it's a collective responsibility from all the players at the moment. Yes, there's the individual responsibilities get better, but there's a collective. They're pushing each other to get into the team and they're pushing each other when they're in the team. Um, I know you all tell me that there's still a lot of work to do to get into the playoffs, but do you get a sense that at the moment no one would want to play Aston Villa? Um, whether anybody would want to play us or not, I don't know. That's for them to answer. Um, all we can keep doing is putting in performances like we're doing at the moment. Um, there's a great tenacity about the, the team at the moment. You know, They can go a goal down, they can go uh, lose a man and go down to 10 men, but still have that in a belief that they're going to go and become the victors. And uh, it's a good place to be at the moment, that's for sure. Um, but we know that we have to continue that. And what's helped is we've had good, very good players come back to full fitness and the strength of the squad and the depth of the squad now is um, you know, very strong. In terms of, of things you've had to face, was it significant Saturday to do it without Greenish and do it without Mings? Because I'm sure you and the players don't think like that, but there's, there will be a common consensus that obviously Jack is, is a huge, huge part of the team, as Tyrone has been since he came in. Yeah, I think it was important because you know, there have been two of our big players over the last six, seven games. So to go and get that performance and that result without them you know, shows that there's a, a great belief and great quality within the squad and um, you know, a great mindset. So you know, it's important that we did that and put in that sort of performance on, on Saturday where, in all honesty, watching the game back, we could have scored seven or eight. Um, just looking at, at Bolton a little bit more, obviously that they, they are very, very close to relegation, but I suppose that's something to be wary of, that they are really in the last chance to lose. Yeah, they are, and you know, we can't control you know, what Bolton are going to do. You know, other results could send them down, um, or it could be our result that sends them down. Um, you know, they've had a, a lot of off-field issues that they've had to deal with, and 
as I've said before, I, thought, I, I think Phil Parkinson and Steve Parkin have got to be commended for the way they've handled everything this season. Um, but we've just got to concentrate and control what we can control, which is ourselves. Obviously, they had a very difficult period off the field this season, and there's been stories this week about financial fair play and whether <coughs> the chairman in the championship want, to, want Aston Villa looked at for their, their adherence to sustainability profitability rules. From your perspective, is there anything for the club to be concerned about? I don't believe so. I mean, I've not seen any quotes attributed to the chairman who's, uh, you know, who's meant to have said it. Um, you know, uh, it's out of my remit. You know, but my chief executive tells me we're we're fully compliant. Uh, and in terms of of planning and, and budgets and all that sort of stuff, is it difficult for you, given that at the moment you have two scenarios possible for next season, depending on what division you're in? Yeah, it's difficult, but it'd be difficult for probably ten other teams in this league as well. You know, so. Um, you know, we'll look at the, the two possibilities and we'll plan around that, which you have to do. And obviously, we, we touched on a couple of the loan players who've had a, a big influence. Is that a conversation again that has to wait to the end of the season as to whether you can, what you can do <coughs> next season? Yeah, no, it will be. Um, you know, Tom Carroll's obviously gone back to Swansea and we've got five players still here on loan. Um, you know, a couple with options to, to purchase them at the end of it. Um, you know, and we'll be looking, that, looking at that when we need to. Cheers, thank you. Okay, um, team, uh, how good is it, does it feel, coming to work with a team on such good form, equally, equally record set, extensive wins, which would be helped 40 years ago? How, what's it like feeling coming today? Yeah, no, it's, you know, there's a spring in everybody's step at the moment because we're winning games. Um, you know, Personally, for me, I'm happy coming in here every day. You know, as soon as I see that Aston Villa sign, it, it brings a smile to my face. Um, but the fact that we're on a good winning run at the moment is 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 uh, very good for everyone. Yeah, uh, this is, if you don't mind, we ask about a former club of yours. Yeah, no worries. Um, Yeah, they could be, but they could also go a long way to rescuing themselves as well because I think they're playing two teams. I think they've got Southend and then Wickham, who were both down there with them. I know Martin very well. I know the the board and the, and the chairman very well, and you know I wish them well, you know, because um, you know they've been in the in League One for a while, and you know hopefully they can retain their status there. Cheers.